community organizations, the local governments, the federal and state officials who are here. Thank you all so much for being here. How do you guys feel about living in a state where we're not working actively to try to undermine representation, but we're actually coming together to put money and resources and time behind enhancing representation for everybody? How do you guys feel about that kind of state? It's not about counting voters. We can do that. That's easy. 
It's not about counting people over 18. It's not about counting citizens. It's not about counting any other subset of people. The only way we have a truly fair system to work for every person in this country is to count the people. And that's what this is all about. And I'll tell you, for me as the president of the Senate, when I get up and I'm standing at the rostrum at the front of the room, it is a, it's truly, it's almost a spiritual experience for me when we do a roll call in the Senate. I know Claudia Kaufman's here, you know, she was in the Senate, she can tell you about this, that when, when we do a roll call, uh, which we do on every single bill for it to become a law, we go through and we say the name of every senator. You know what's going through my mind is each one of those senators represents about 2% of the state. So just count them out, 49 of them. We just go through that list and each one is equal. Doesn't matter whether they represent Seattle or Squim or Spokane, doesn't matter. It's just an equal amount. So one person, one vote means not only are we gonna make sure that, and I think our state has grown in population, I'd like to make an argument for us getting one more member of Congress yeah. in this state, right? So not only that, not only does it mean we get another electoral college vote, that's important, but also means that when the Senate comes back again next time, for the next Senate, that we make sure that nobody, no senator has got a stronger voice than any other senator. They all represent, in our state legislature, equal sized districts. So that's the fairness principle. And then the third principle, probably the most important to me, is equity. It's about equity. Because, you know, we know that um, there are a lot of Washingtonians. How often do you guys hear politicians, see I'm kind of rare in politics, and a lot of times around here, you hear politicians say things like, I'm a fifth generation Washingtonian, I'm a fourth generation Washington, I'm a ninth generation Washingtonian. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so my parents came from Iran, and, um, and I moved here to Washington State when I was eight years old. And so we know that because it's not just about electoral college votes or congressional votes or everything, there's also a lot of money that follows this census, right? And that money goes for housing, health care, education, roads, bridges, you name it, right? It's coming from the federal government. And so in order for that money to get to the right places, to get to the places where it will enhance equity, we actually need to make sure we know who lives where and who is of what background and who needs it. That's the equity piece of this. And you can bet the fifth generation, the sixth generation Washingtonians, they know how to get their census report data in. But here's the thing, like, again, I'm different than a lot of other politicians because I come from a community that doesn't totally get it when it comes to the census. It's like not part of our history and culture. Some of us in the Middle Eastern community came from places where you didn't necessarily want the government to find out who you are, where you're from. And let's be honest, sometimes that's how this country feels too. Right, so, so there is a lot of fear, and I'll give you a very concrete example of where there's misunderstanding, even in this 2020 census, which is better. But let me give you an example. There's no Middle Eastern or North African selection you can make for race. So, like, and I have people from my own community, Iranian Americans, who will say to me like, I don't want to fill out this because I don't know what I need to fill out because I don't feel like I'm Asian, but I don't feel like I'm white. Certainly don't feel like I'm Latino. Don't feel like I'm African American. So, so where do I fit in? And it's still an open question. So I've got to do the work this next year to use my voice to go out and say to the military community, it doesn't, you still have to figure, you still have to fill it out. You still have to be counted. Because the answer is not for us to go deeper in the shadows. You see, when there's not a lot of light, you don't go and hide in the chest. You try to expand that light. You try to go find yourself and place yourself in the center of that light that is there. And so we need to make sure that we're doing that if we really truly mean it about equity. If we want to make sure that housing dollars go to the right place, healthcare dollars, education dollars go where they need to go, we need to make sure that those communities that have been intimidated the most, that have been excluded the most, that face the most barriers, are the ones that we're going out and reaching out to the most. So, Here's the good news. We have an amazing start here today with all of you guys, and I'm gonna put myself in that camp. 
okay? Because I'm gonna put myself, I'm captain of the Iranian American outreach team here in this room, all right? So, so that's my assignment. That's my assignment, and I'm gonna do everything I can for the rest of the state too, but you all have your assignments. You know what they are, you're here, and we're gonna go out, we're gonna find even more foot soldiers to help us to do this, and here's the deal. Why did the legislature say we're about $15 million behind this effort? Because we said we can't do it on our own at the state. We can't do it alone with the federal government. We have to dig deep, go into the community, and go to trusted partners. You see, people aren't, Iranian Americans aren't going to believe people. They'll believe me if I tell them this is why it's important for you to fill it out. So it's important that it comes from trusted partners. Trust apart community organizations, mm -hmm. local faith communities, local governments, tribal governments. And so this is the absolute right group of people to get us started with that in the name of inclusion, in the name of fairness, and the name of equity. And on behalf of Governor Inslee, our state legislature, and the whole state, I want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you for the service that you all are doing. We've got thousands of census and temporary employees that are stepping up, but you all are getting paid. You're not getting anything to do this. You all are doing this because you know this is how we make sure every Washingtonian counts. Thank you for what you do. God bless.